play on your music. If you're using your music, it's that super slow yoga flow. And then whilst we're here on our backs, we're going to take the feet as wide as the mat. And then allow the knees just to fall in towards each other. And taking the feet as wide creates a little bit of um, sort of tension or tightness or pain in the knees. Just bring the feet a little bit closer, just somewhere comfortable for the knees to fall in together. The palms are going to be open towards the ceiling and the eyes are gently closed. Lengthen through the spine to so we tuck the chin down towards the throat, towards the chest. We'll just take a nice big inhale here through the nose. Exhale, gently sigh it out of the mouth. Again, inhaling through the nose, into the chest, the belly, the sides of the body. And then exhale, sigh it out. Just one more time this way, a big inhale, filling the belly like a balloon. And then exhaling, just sighing it out. Either keeping those breaths coming in and out that way. Or allowing the breath to come in and out of the nose. I'm just taking this moment here to feel the weight of the body. To relax, to soften down into the mat. And know that with class today, only 60 to 70% of the work we will do will be the body. The rest will be the breath. And also we'll give time to the postures, so just allowing ourselves to find that depth naturally, calmly, without forcing. So within, with winter approaching and this time of social confinement upon us, just allow yourself to look inwards, to listen to the body. Notice if there's any areas of tightness, any areas of tension. Also, take this moment to set an intention, a focus for either class or the time ahead. And know this one thing, that there is strength and power within the ability to rest. There is strength and power within the ability to rest. With the eyes still closed, just gently open the knees up, maybe bring the feet back in line with the hips. And just slowly allow the knees to fall to one side. As we exhale, gently bring them back to centre the soles of the feet finding the floor. And then inhaling, allowing them to fall to the left side, so the other way. Exhaling, coming through centre. And then we go the same again, so they just fall to the side. They come back to centre and they gently fall to the other side. It doesn't have to be very big, it can be small or just a gentle rocking from side to side. We're just softly massaging the lower back, the pelvis, maybe the head goes in opposition so it turns the other way. Doing a few more, just window wiping the knees gently or as big as feels good for your lower back. Maybe synchronizing the breath and taking it just a little deeper. After the next one, left and right, bring those legs back to center. Slightly draw the belly button into spine. So you can feel the top of the pelvis pressing down into the mat. Bring the right knee in towards the chest. Interlace the fingers and then take that little hammock with the hands over the knee. So it's just below the kneecap. Fingertips 
pressing in towards the knuckles, the elbows coming in towards the rib cage. So we just gently compress the knee towards the chest, massaging the internal organs, lengthening the lower back, building heat in the hips, the knee and the fingers. We're also working those biceps, so an isometric hold through the arms, as if we're bicep curling the knee in towards the chest, maybe the right shoulder. So try to keep those eyes closed. For the majority of class today, like I said at the beginning, just drawing everything inwards, getting about the day, your morning, the news, work, any difficulties you may have encountered, just letting them go. They are physical, they are material. And right now we're just focusing on, on our internal thoughts, our internal feelings. Either stay here or you can lengthen the left leg away. Flexing the foot so you press the heel away from the body. And as well as this compression on the right hand side, we get a nice lengthening through the left front of the hip. Maybe you can take the knee around the ribcage further towards the shoulder, the armpit, but checking that both of those sit bones are nice and equal, balanced into the floor. Feeling the heat rising in the knuckles and the fingers pressing those fingertips into the space between the knuckles, so those acupressure points, points of release, of self-massage. Don't worry if there's any gurgling or any noises coming from the belly. This is a really good posture to calm the central nervous system. And when we do so, the belly sometimes tends to make a couple of gurgling noises, so don't worry. We'll take the right knee across the body, coming into a spinal twist nice and early. So take your time as you come into the posture. Allow the knee to either find the floor or a pillow, or you can allow it just to hang in space, but just check you're not gripping in the hip. Gently lengthen the right arm away. Maybe bend the elbow for cactus if you haven't any space to lengthen, or finding a comfortable position for that right arm. Still closing down the eyes and then turning the face to the right. So turning away from the knee. A big twist from the crown of the head all the way down to the left toes. That twist through the middle part of the back. So feeling the release through the lower back, the chest, maybe into the glutes. Really seeing if you can allow that knee to be heavy. Working on finding the weight of the body and finding the power of gravity today. Softening the face, we'll take three more breaths. If you're finding it hard to hold the postures, maybe work on counting the breath. So an inhale for three, and exhale for three. Maybe you can go a little longer. Finding a number that's comfortable for you if you're really struggling on settling into the postures. We'll take just one more breath. And at the end of that third exhale, begin to draw the knee into the chest so you can roll onto the back. Keeping this right knee in towards the body, we're going to re-bend the left leg so the sole of the foot finds the floor, crossing the ankle over the knee so we can open that right hip up, creating a little number four with the legs. If this is enough for you, using your own strength to press the knee away, then you can stay here. If you want to get into the glutes, we float the left foot off the floor, bringing the legs in towards the body, and then posting the right hand through the hole and the left hand meets it either on top of the shin or in between the hamstring and the calf. Check that you haven't tilted through the head. 
The chin is still down towards the throat. And like we did before in that compression pose, we bend at the elbows, bicep curling the legs in towards the body. So feeling that stretch deeply into the right glute. And again, we're lengthening through the lower back. We've got a lot of sitting down ahead of us. So it's really good just to focus on lengthening on the lower back whenever you get the chance, whenever you remember. This is a great stretch. It hits multiple areas. Softening through the body. You can stay here if you're enjoying the stretch and you feel like you have a little longer, a little further to go. Or you can come into a deeper spinal twist. So we release the left leg, the sole of the foot finds the floor, and then now we've crossed the right knee over the left knee. So the right knee is stacked. Taking the arms back out in line with the shoulders or somewhere that is comfortable. We float the left foot off the floor, so both knees are coming tightly in towards the body. Take a nice big inhale here through the nose. And then as you exhale, guide those knees down to the left hand side, turning the head to the right. So this is a slightly deeper spinal twist. If you do have any pain or any pinching in the lower back, then you can uncross the legs and come back to the first variation we did. Taking a few moments here to breathe into the back, into the rib cage. Allowing the knees to be heavy. If you're struggling to let go, then maybe using a pillow or a cushion just to support the legs. Two more breaths here. Trying to let go. Trying to find the depth of the posture. And then gently, if you're in the cross-legged twist, we press off with the right foot just to give us the support to bring the knees back to center. Uncrossing the right leg, the sole of the foot finds the floor. Float the left knee in this time. So the same thing on the other side, you may feel a little unbalanced at the moment, a little different on the left side. We're interlacing the fingers to create that little cup fall underneath the kneecap. Draw the left knee in towards the chest to begin with. The elbows drawing down into the ribcage. Bicep curling that knee in. And pressing the fingertips into that space behind the knuckles once more. So those acupressure points behind the knuckles. Tuck the chin down towards the chest. And gently curl that knee in a little further. Being careful, being cautious not to press through the right foot so the lower back is lengthening into the mat. Feeling the warmth in the fingers, maybe in the hip joint now. Remember we have plenty of time in each posture, working with the breath, coming back to the counts if you feel rushed or impatient. The breath has this great power to distract us. It's free, so why don't we use it, especially today? Maybe lengthening that right leg down to the end of the mat, flexing the foot. And possibly if it feels accessible for you, see if you can take the left knee around the ribcage towards the shoulder, the armpit. Elbows still drawing in towards the ribs, working those muscles, lengthening the neck. Just compressing the ascending colon as well as other organs on the left hand side. Releasing sacroiliac joints of the lower back where the pelvis meets. Really good for anybody with any sciatic nerve pain. Relaxing the shoulders. Two more breaths here. So maybe drawing that, that knee in a little closer towards the shoulder, towards the chest. Still flexing the right foot. And then when you're ready, we'll take the left knee across the body. 
guiding it down towards the floor, maybe onto your pillow. And then we'll lengthen the left arm away or finding somewhere comfortable for it to be. The right hand can be on top of the leg or into the floor, depending on what space you have or what feels comfortable. And we turn the face to the left. So we get a nice stretch through the right side of the neck, through the spine, down through the lower back, into the leg. Taking the breath into the sides of the body, into the back. And still focusing on the way you've chosen to breathe. So that may be to count or to inhale through the nose, to exhale out of the mouth. But know that you don't have to stick with just one. You can experiment. Maybe one of the breath techniques we've done already, like the circle breath or the three point breath where we breathe into the chest, the sides of the body and the belly. You can bring it all in whenever you wish. One more breath here, allowing that knee to be nice and heavy. And then we'll draw the left knee back into the chest so we can roll onto the back. Bending the right leg now so the sole of the foot finds the floor so that glute stretch on the left side. The left ankle passes over the knee. We take a moment here to flex the left foot and then see if we, without the hands, can press the left knee as far away from us as you can. So using that glute and the muscles in the front of the leg. In a moment here, you may wish to stay here or maybe you float the right foot off the floor. We post the left hand, then the right hand meets it on the other side. So either on top of the shin, if you find that the chin has lifted up towards the ceiling to get there, maybe just regress down to behind the hamstring. Tapping the chin down, lengthening through the spine. Bicep curling once more, so really working on the strength in the arms this, uh, today. Shoulder blades drawing into the mat. We'll just take a few more breaths here. Really working on pressing that left knee away and curling the right leg in. Remember to keep those eyes closed, soft, gentle. Two more breaths and maybe see if you can pull that right leg in just a little bit more and then allow the breath to do the rest of the work. Relax the hands, allow the sole of the foot to find the floor. Crossing now the left knee over the right knee. The arms open up to cactus or bird wings. Big inhale. Exhale, float the feet off of the floor. Inhale here, yeah, flattening through the lower back. And then exhale, allow both legs to fall to the right as you turn the head to the left. So one side may feel a little tighter than the other, and maybe that's okay. That you can regress on one side and it won't make you walk around in circles. But if you need to, you can stack both knees on top of each other. But right now, right here, it's really important that we see if we can let go. So letting go with the exhale. Letting go of the belly, letting go of the legs. And allowing maybe that left ear to find the floor. It's so that full twist from the crown of the head all the way down through the spine, the hips, the knees, the legs. Two more breaths. Thinking, softening down. And then just slowly again, we'll press off the right foot, then the left. Coming back to centre, uncrossing the legs. And then bringing both knees into the chest. Taking hold of maybe opposite wrist or forearm, you may want to release the head off of the mat to do so. And then placing it back down, nice big hug of the knees. Maybe a little roll from side to side, massaging the lower back. And then whenever you're ready, there's no rush. 
We're going to let go of the wrists, of the arms. Take a little shuffle over to the left hand side of our mat so we can roll onto the right side of the body. Eyes remaining closed here. Still keeping that gaze, that focus inwards. And then slowly coming up onto the bottom. So pressing yourself up again. Try to keep those eyes closed if you can. We're going to lengthen the legs out in front of us. Flex the feet. You may want a little soft bend in the knee or you may want to sit on a pillow. We're going to reach the arms just gently forward and then exhale. Melt over the legs. So you're not worrying too much about keeping the chest up here. Just really releasing, letting go of the body, of the head, of the lower back. And if you are finding this pose quite restrictive, like I said, see what it's like to raise the hips up. So you might want to sit on a pillow to just give you a little bit more space in the hips or a book or a block, just to get a little deeper into the stretch. If you're feeling any pain behind the knees, see what it's like to soften the knees. Again, maybe using that trusty pillow to pop underneath the knees and then fold forward. So lots of options here to make this pose comfortable. Forward folds can be quite difficult depending on the length of the hamstrings and the anatomy of your hips to get into. So it's all about finding a variation that works for you. It may not look the same to somebody else's. But as long as you're getting that stretch into the belly of the hamstrings, the lower back, the glutes, maybe into the calves, that's all that matters. So no forcing, no pulling. Surrendering, letting go. And always coming back to the breath. We've got about six breaths here, so taking your time. Relaxing the arms somewhere maybe alongside the body. Allowing the head to be heavy. And if you do find it difficult to sit still, then it's okay to maybe have a little sway from side to side. And just allowing the body to move with the breath. And right now, instead of focusing on how the body feels, we will see how the breath feels. So is it strong? Is it fluid? Is it down into the belly, into the back? Or is it short? Is it fluttering? Is it, can you feel it in the chest or in the collarbones? Knowing there's no right or wrong way of breathing, it's something we do naturally. We do just pick up these little habits that maybe increase our uh, susceptibility to anxiety or nervousness. And our breath can sometimes make us feel tense. The way we counteract that is by breathing into the belly. Inhaling, inflating like a balloon. Then exhaling, deflating, drawing the belly into the spine. So big, calm breaths, deeply into the depths of the body. Two more. And find this out a little closer to the legs. After that exhale, we're going to slowly roll it up through the spine. 
keeping those eyes closed if you can, if you need to open them, then feel free. We're gonna bend in the right leg so the sole of the foot comes to the inside of the left thigh. The knee falls out to the side. If we take the right hand behind us, we have two options here. You can either just lengthen the left arm up towards the ceiling, allowing the head to fall back and feeling this nice openness through the left side of the body. Or you can engage the glutes, pressing through the heels of the hands. See if you can lift the hips up towards the ceiling, pressing the hip bones up to the sky and then really releasing the head back behind you. So this wild thing variation, opening the hips, you won't be here too long. Making sure you are equally supported between the right hand and the right knee. Maybe feeling a little bit of work into the right thigh, the right quadricep. Then we'll take a big inhale. Exhale, allow the bottom to find the floor. Coming back through center as we switch the legs over, so the right leg lengthens, the left leg bends. Bring the sole of the foot in towards the thigh, above the knee, and the left hand finds the floor, heel of the hand towards the body. And then the right arm reaches up, finding that length through pointing toes from the right foot to the right hand. That option to stay here or bringing the weight in between the heel of the hand and the knee as we lift the bottom up, releasing the head back, looking towards the fingertips. And really enjoying this openness to the front of the body. The head, hanging the head soft. Two more breaths, so inhaling, relaxing the head, the arm. So inhaling, squeezing the bottom. And then exhaling, returning the bum back down to the mat. Both legs are going to bend in. We come to Malasana, so nice and slowly pressing yourself forward onto the feet. If you're up on the walls of the feet, that's okay. Maybe see if you can take the legs a little wider. And then we bring the hands to prayer. The elbows, the inside of the knees, all on top. Then close the eyes down. Again, we won't be here too long. We know it can be uncomfortable. Seeing if you can relax the shoulders. Relax the face. And have a sense of the weight going through the heels through the crown of the head, down the spine, and then out through the tailbone, that sense of grounding. It's a really good posture to open the hips, again to lengthen the lower back. But also to find that sense of rooting down, of calming down. Spread of the toes, connection of the hands. One last breath, big inhale. Exhale. Place the hands onto the floor. Begin to lengthen the legs and send the bottom up towards the ceiling as we bring those feet into a comfortable distance apart. Softening through the legs, the hands are just going to hang onto the floor, the head relaxed. Maybe the backs of the hands into the mat actually, so we can lengthen and open through the front of the wrists. Head heavy, so if the eyes were to open, you'd be looking between the knees. And just take a couple of moments here to feel the weight going into the balls of the feet now. Feel the blood rush into the head. But also the length of the hamstring. The length of the calf, the Achilles. But also that sense of each and every vertebrae falling away from each other. So that spaciousness between the vertebrae in the spine. Three more breaths if you want to take hold of opposite elbow and opposite hand if you feel like that helps. Then take a hold. And again, remember you don't have to be still. If it feels nice to gently sway, you can do. 
Just noticing what feels good for you, your body, your mind. What's calming, what's nurturing, what's nourishing. Gently place the hands on the floor in front of you. Step the feet back to a down facing dog. So we're keeping this inverted position. The hips above the heart, spreading through the fingers, softening the knees, spreading through the toes. And we'll take three breaths here. So feeling supported between the hands and the feet. Caressing the floor away. Being engaged the, uh, the back, so the laps. Also seeing if you can get that contact with the index finger, the knuckle of the index finger onto the floor. Head relaxed. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. One more time, big inhale. Exhale. Slowly begin to lift the head, keep the eyes closed if you can, so you can lower the knees down to the mat. Untuck the toes. And then we're going to set the right foot to the outside of the right hand into this lizard pose. So not too long, somewhere that is comfortable. If you do want to take that knee a little further back, you can do. But focusing on keeping the length in the lower back. Releasing the head. A few moments here, pressing down through the big toe, the baby toe, lifting through the arch of the foot. So this active stretch through the hip, that end range strength. And then slowly lift the toes, the ball of the foot off the floor, and then just spinning on the heel to turn the foot about 45 degrees, you're on that angle. Option to stay here on the hands, or maybe you feel like you can come down onto the forearms or onto a block or a pillow. And trying to relax, melt down, let go. Breathe into your lizard. So relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the face, and deepening the breath. Two more moments here. You have your option to stay here, you know that this is okay, this is deep enough. But if you want to get into that left glute, then you come back onto the hands, into the left hip, sorry. We bend the left heel in towards the bottom, and then we reach the right arm up towards the ceiling. So finding this lifted pose to begin with. Then the right arm cartwheels behind us to take hold of the foot. Bring the heel in towards the bottom. So if you need extra padding, you can do. If this feels terrible on the knees, then forget about it. Return back to visit or something a little bit more comfortable for you. And then whilst we're here, closing the eyes but shining the face up towards the ceiling. Just two breaths because it's quite deep. Breathing into that left hip, that left quadricep, that left thigh. Slowly without catapulting, allowing that left foot to find the floor. Tucking under the toes, pressing the right hand into the mat so we can lift the knee. You can keep the knee lifted if you need to, and we'll take that right foot back to down the facing dog. So take a moment here to maybe pedal. Maybe wiggle the hips. And then we're going to come into a lizard pose, or a pigeon pose. 
just to give a little bit of time off the wrists. It can be quite hard on the wrists, lizards. So we just float the right foot off of the floor. Bring the right knee towards the right fist and then place the shin down in front of the pelvis. Making sure the hips are square. We take the body behind the heel and then try and get the front of the left hip nice and square. And we're keeping lifted off of the right glute, so you don't want to find yourself sinking into the right side. We're staying lifted, hips, shoulders are square. So either staying here on the hands, making your way down towards the forearms or maybe onto the forehead. Coming into your pigeon pose. And I'll just give you another option. If this is too much, if you're finding that the knee does not want to bend that way or it's slightly hurting the outside of the knees, and you can do this on your back like you did at the beginning of class. So you just lie on the back, cross the ankle over the knee, and then bring the knee in towards the chest. So it's the same stretch. Pigeon's just a little deeper and requires a little bit more range of motion in the hips. But don't worry if you haven't quite got that yet. Like I said, everybody's anatomy is different. Everybody's practice is different. We're all coming from a different journey, a different background. So listening to your body and doing what serves it right now in this moment. Six breaths here. So just checking in, seeing this into the belly, the back, the sides of the body rather than just the chest. And spend so much time breathing in, breathing in, and breathing in that we forget to exhale, let go and sink. Find that power in our own breath. That power to relieve, to calm, to rid us of any worries or tension. Also to connect within ourselves, within our bodies. One more breath here, wherever you are, trying to breathe through the resistance of pigeon. If there's pain, then make those modifications. So if it's just that tightness in the glutes and the hip, then just see if you can stick with it just for one more breath. And up off the forehead, up off the forearms, onto the palms. If you're on your back, then returning back to knees and downward facing dog. So we tuck the toes, lift the knees, send the foot back, to downward facing dog, have a pedal. Just make sure that right leg is still functioning. It's still attached. Maybe have a wiggle of the hips. And we'll go for the same thing on the other side. So when you're ready, you begin to lower the knees down to the floor. Step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. The toes going forward to begin with, untucking the back toes. Pressing through the ball of the big foot, the big toe. Relaxing the shoulders. Finding our lizard pose. So that may be nice two right angles for you with the right leg and the left leg. Or possibly you want to take that right knee a little further back to get into the front of the hip deeper. Try not to allow right now that knee to go over the toes. So when it's stacked over the ankle, feeling the lift through the arch of the foot by pressing the toes into the floor. Two more breaths here. So little tip is to try and hug the knee in towards the shoulder and towards the armpit. So again, that active stretch, that end of range strength. Good to be flexible, to be open, but if we're not strong at the end of our range of movement, and that's where injuries occur. So strength, flexibility, mobility, all in balance with each other. So 
beginning to lift the toes, the ball of the foot off the floor, spinning the foot to out to that 45 degree angle, just so you get a little bit more openness in the hip. And then maybe coming down onto the forearms. If you need to pad that back knee out, you can do. Being in the stretch into the hamstring. Checking that you're not trying to get away from your own leg, that you're not leaning all the way over to the right, that you're nice and equal through the shoulders, the hips. Head relaxed and heavy. And take those deep breaths once more into the belly, into the sides of the body, into the back. Relaxing the shoulders. If you want to have a wiggle or a little rock from side to side, you can, as long as it's not interfering with the speed of the breath. In that draw of gravity as it takes you down towards the floor. So it may feel quite heavy as you press the floor away through the arms, through the hands. So this option to stay here or to come onto the palms if you're on the forearms. To bend that right knee in, padding underneath the knee if you need to, but keeping the weight going forward. The left arm reaches up towards the ceiling, take a gaze or just shine the face up towards that left hand with the eyes closed. And then exhale, cartwheel the left hand behind you to take hold of the foot, the heel, the ankle, or maybe using your tea towel to lasso the foot. And take two breaths, just looking over the left shoulder, eyes can remain closed if you wanted to. After the second exhale, begin to let the right leg float to the floor. The left hand finds the mat. We tuck under the back toes. We lift the knee and then we step the left leg back to down facing dog. That nice supported position between the hands and the feet. If you need to have a wiggle again, you can do. Then so coming to pigeon on the left side now. So we float the left foot off. Swoop the left knee to the left wrist, the shin coming in front of the pelvis, the foot in front of the pelvis. And then finding your position, so walking the weight back if you need to. Maybe popping a pillow or a block underneath the left glute to avoid sitting down on it. And then remember you can lie on your back and do this the other way if you need to, so that number four stretch. Taking a moment here, do you see how the body feels? Notice if you need any props, any padding, any modification. And then begin to sink down into the floor. Looking onto the forearms, releasing the head, relaxing the head, relaxing the shoulders, hips square. And welcoming in the breath here, so not forcing it away. Not holding the breath, allowing it to enter through the nose, to pass down the throat, through the chest, into the sides of the body, into the belly, into that left hip joint. And then to slowly exhale its way back out the same way it came. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the face. Still square. Just one more four breaths here. So making sure you're comfortable. If you need to be supported in any way, shape or form, then feel free to grab those supports right now. No, you can stay here longer if you want to. Just 
One more breath. And slowly coming on to the forearms, then onto the hands. So all we do here is now we can sit onto the left glutes. We bring the right leg up forward, soles of the feet find the floor. And then we hug the knees in towards the chest and the forehead finds the knees. Shoulders relaxed. Taking a moment here just to hug everything in, which is open it all up. Allowing the head to be heavy. The breath to come into the shoulders, the ribs, the back. And go of the elbows here. We're going to lengthen the legs out in front of us. Taking the hands underneath the bottom, so you just sit on the palms, the palms going down towards the floor. So palms into the mat, the fingers underneath the bottom, and then we take the elbows down onto the floor. Pointing the toes, pressing through the elbows, we lift the chest. And then if you feel comfortable, allowing the head to fall backwards. So fish pose, the head is off of the floor. It's suspended. It's floating at the front of the throat, the thyroid, the chest. All those chakras down the front of the body are open, exposed. allowing us to take in more breath to stretch areas we don't necessarily stretch on a daily basis and also feeling what it's like to really let go of that head one more breath here before we start getting pins and needles in the hands and then allow the head to slowly find the floor as you do so tuck in the chin so you can lengthen through the neck Release the hands from underneath the bottom. Bring the knees into the chest. Knees go wide. Take the outside arches of the feet, the happy baby. Tucking the chin down towards the throat. Having a nice little rock from side to side. Massaging the lower back, the middle back the upper back and also the skull, the back of the cranium. And that connective tissue, that fascia, that runs over the head, the spine, the back, the lower back. Also this gentle rocking of the pelvis, the fluidity of the lower body, again induces that sense of calm. The reason we rock baby, then we become adults and we forget to rock ourselves, so it's really nice just to allow the breath to take you from side to side. And you can continue to rock if you wish. Or when you're ready, meeting in to Badakanasana, so the soles of the feet come together, the outside arch of the feet find the floor, and then those knees open up. Don't worry if there's a slight curve in the lower back, placing the hands on the belly, lowering the shoulders down into the floor, maybe squeezing the shoulder blades together. Softening the face. And feeling that breath as it rises into the hands with the inhale. And then as it falls deeply into the earth with the exhale. Rising into the hands, up to the sky with the inhale. And falling into the earth with the exhale. Taking a few moments like this. Feeling the warmth of the hands on the belly the warmth of the breath in the body. And 
slowly just releasing the hands <clears throat> off of the belly, lengthening one leg, then the other away from the body if that is comfortable for you for your Shavasana. You may wish to have the feet again like you did at the beginning of class, nice and wide so the knees can fall in if that's more comfortable for your lower back. Or you may prefer just to lie on the right hand side. If you need to pop a couple of layers on, then feel free. Your socks, maybe a jumper. But just finding somewhere you can be comfortable. Closing the eyes. Having the arms either alongside the body with the palms open. Or the hands gently resting on the belly with the eyes closed. Just feel the weight of the body. Take a big inhale. Exhale. Let go into the softness of the mat, the softness of the earth. Allow all the sensations of class just wash over the body. That power, that magic of the breath to nourish the body and cleanse it of what we don't need. Relaxing the feet, relaxing the toes the arches, the heels, the ankles, relaxing the legs, the calves, that space underneath the knee, the space behind the knee, relaxing the thighs, the quadriceps, the hip flexors, so the knees, the legs roll out maybe, or roll in if the legs are bent. Relaxing the hamstrings, the glutes, feeling that openness through the hips, from hip bone to hip bone. Relax the belly. Relax the back of the body, the sides of the body. Relax fingers arms, the thumbs and the wrists, relax the hands, relax the arms, the forearms, the elbows, the biceps and the triceps, and then relax the shoulders, feel them fall heavy into the floor, into the earth. The openness of the chest rising with the body on the inhale and falling with the body on the exhale. Relax the throat, then the jaw, so feel the lips, the teeth part, the tongue relaxed, the cheeks heavy as they fall towards the ears. The eyes, behind the eyelids, relax, the eyebrows relax, the space between the eyebrows, the brow, the third eye space, the all seeing, relaxed, calm, open. Whole body whole mind, whole spirit, calm within this moment. Take a deep breath into that calmness, into that space. And exhale, fall a little deeper.
one more deep breath in through the nose, filling out the body, the belly, the lungs. And then exhale, sigh it out to the mouth. When you're ready, just slowly begin to move those toes. Then maybe the feet. Move the fingers. And then maybe the hands. Move the head. Work from side to side. Maybe all at the same time or all in turn. And then take that little shuffle to the left once more, the eyes remaining closed, so we can roll onto the warmth of the right side. A moment of heart rate, the blood pressure to regulate, just avoiding that sense of dizziness as we sit up. And pressing off of the left hand. Come to you, sit in a comfortable seated position, however that may be for you today. And we'll just take the backs of the hands onto the knees, palms open, open to give and open to receive. Coming tall through the crown of your head. Feel the crown of the head as it lengthens up towards the sky. And the tailbone, the sitting bones, as we ground down into the earth. Breathe into all that space in between. For that last exhale, emptying the body of everything you don't need for the rest of the day. Just reminding yourself that there is strength and power within this ability to rest, within this ability to move and live slowly. With the permission we have for the next four weeks. See if you can give yourself that permission to move slowly, to speak slowly. Think slowly, to take your time, to breathe, to rest and to relax, to worry less and to appreciate more. Gently drop the chin to the chest. Bring the hands together in front of the heart, rub them gently to create some heat within the palms. And then placing the warm palms in front of the eyes, allow the eyes to slowly open to adjust to the light. And then stacking the head, bring the hands to prayer, namaste.